Hello friends. Today's art lesson is how to watercolor an ocean scene. We are going to be practicing the technique of mixing watercolor with water to make our watercolors look like water. There are so many different ways to do this and for today's exercise I'm going to be emphasizing some techniques you can be thinking about as you're using your watercolor to give it more of an organic, natural, watery kind of look. What we'll be using are um, is you'll need a a piece of watercolor paper. And if you don't have a piece of watercolor paper, you can still practice along, but watercolor is gonna interact with paper differently in watercolor paper. And, and for today's purposes, watercolor paper will be really, really helpful. You'll also need a paintbrush and some watercolors, which can be any different kind. I use the kind in tubes, but you can use the kind in a tray. And you might wanna have a paper towel handy for dabbing or drying your brush, as well as, um, a cup of water for your watercolors. We are gonna be using a technique called wet on wet where we're gonna be putting water on our paper and adding color. And I want you to follow along with me, but maybe watch the video first and get some ideas and then go ahead and practice on your own because a lot of this is about learning how the paint works and learning how your brush and water and paint interact together. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have are some watercolors here and my watercolors look like this. Um, they're in tubes, but you can use any kind of watercolor. And I have a paintbrush. I also have a pencil. We're gonna start by drawing in some ocean animals. I have a couple colored pencils and some water so that I can use my watercolors. Um, the, the way that we're going to be drawing our watercolor ocean scene today is I want to show you some techniques of how to make watercolor look like ocean water. And just to make it interesting, we're going to go ahead and draw just a few ocean animals in our ocean scene today. Now I'm going to keep these really, really simple and mostly it's because I want to show you uh, how to paint around an object because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting large washes and so I'm going to draw this little whale and you can see how I'm drawing it in really, really lightly and then maybe over here I'm going to draw maybe an eel. These are all happy animals. I'm drawing little smiley faces. And then maybe over here I'm going to have some smaller ocean creatures and I'm just going to block in some fish. This is very, very light. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to make this interesting. But really our uh, the lesson that I'm going to show you today is how to use watercolor and a wet on wet water technique to give the impression of actual water. So I'm gonna get my paintbrush and I'm gonna dip it in my water. I don't even have color on it yet. I simply have water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the edges of my whale here. And then soon I'm gonna go around the edges of my eel. And what I'm doing is I'm making a water barrier. The reason why watercolors are so fun to work with is they, um, will pool and spread in water, but when it approaches a water barrier, it will stop. If I was doing this um, for maybe a more final piece, I would use something called masking. But for the sake of the exercise today, I want you to watch what happens. And I'm just dipping my paintbrush in some colors. When I add, I'm adding a lot of water to my brush. When I add, water to my paper and then I just dab in the color Doop. and you can see how the color is starting to spread and I'm going to let that color really percolate and mix in with the water and you can see how it makes all these really amazing organic shapes because I because we're painting water and because water is a liquid we're going to make sure that no hard shapes are happening in our painting today. And so, and so as soon as I see it blending in, I'm gonna just lightly brush around the edge of maybe a darker spot to make sure that it stays loose. 
And you can see that as, let's do that one more time. Let's, let's actually, let's go around our eel now. So I'm gonna go around our eel and I'm gonna use the edge of this paintbrush to help me get a line nice and even around that pencil that I've done. I have a little bit of color in my water because now my water is starting to turn blue. But you can see how there's no water on the eel. And when I dip my paintbrush, and then I add my blue color, you can see how it's not gonna go inside of the eel, it's only gonna stay around. And that's gonna help me so that I can just focus on the water. So that's the first part, is getting the outside of your object, whatever it is you wanna do. It doesn't have to be an ocean animal. You could do seaweed, you could do a submarine. But the idea is playing with water and experimenting with what happens when it has a water barrier, just like that. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about is I have these watercolors. And I showed you this before. I have some green, I have some blue, I have some turquoise. And water in the ocean is not necessarily one color, right? You're gonna get all kinds of colors and that's because it is um, a liquid, it reflects light. There are so many different factors of what makes water look blue or turquoise or green. It depends on the time of day, it depends on the weather, it depends on what's in the water and what the makeup is. And so I'm gonna make sure that as I'm painting water, I'm not gonna use just one color. I'm not gonna be afraid to throw in some other bluish or greenish colors. So here I'm adding a little bit of turquoise and you can see now how this water is pooling and it's bleeding through and it's spreading through. But the neat thing is, is that it's not going to cross the line of where my animals are because of that water barrier. So I'm gonna let that pool through. And if you have a lot of water on your paper, sometimes it can be fun to move your paper around and let it spread. You'll also notice that in my watercolor painting, I have not color covered the entire surface. So I've as I've dabbled through, I've purposely left some places blank, and those are gonna act as water barriers too. So as I'm moving this paper around, it's gonna mix with wherever there's water, but it's not gonna mix wherever it's dry. So let's keep going. I'm starting to get this really beautiful organic feeling of the water, but I also see that, do you see where some of these darker colors are? They're getting it to be a little blotchy, and in a real ocean, we're not gonna get that much of a concentration of saturation. So I'm gonna get my water, my brush, and I'm gonna blend out some of those more defined areas so that I don't, it, it, we don't get the impression of, you know, something more solid or something more uh, opaque. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna start filling out the rest of my painting. And I'm pushing a little hard on these edges because the paint now is starting to dry. And if I don't push it into the paper, we're gonna get that hard line. If I were doing this uh, not on a video, I'd probably be doing this about 10 times faster because water dries so fast, you gotta work fast. But because we're painting water today, we can, we can, be, we can let the natural accidents or circumstances that happen work in our favor. So here I have these two little fish and I'm gonna go around those little fish. Those are the only objects that I've created in my painting today, but maybe in your painting, you have some more objects. Now, one color we haven't really worked with yet is this green. I have this beautiful emerald green color and I'm gonna start dabbing the color into the water. I'm not gonna worry about filling in a big area yet. Watercolor is a kind of paint that is really beautiful to, um, to keep light at the very beginning. You can always go darker, but in watercolor, you can't ever go lighter. If you lay down a really dark color, it's very, very difficult to lighten it up again. And so I'm not gonna put on too much color yet because I wanna see what happens 
with my water pooling. So here I've got this side over here and I'm gonna, it's probably hard to see, but all around the edges, I have this clear, clearish, because my water is starting to get more bluish green, clearish water. And when I dab it, so I've added this green and you can see how it's starting to bleed through the paper. But now I'm gonna add little dabbles of this blue. And I love this color blue. It really is a saturated color, but it has a bluish green feeling to it as well. It almost looks like fireworks, doesn't it? It can be really interesting to see what your paint does and just let it do its thing. Don't be afraid of what it's doing. You're gonna watch it bleed through. And then after that, for instance, it's a little bit darker than I'd like here. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna help it blend through. So I'm gonna actually take my paintbrush and spread it up. I don't wanna to ruin too much what it did because whatever the paint does naturally is really, really beautiful. So I have a few spots here that are a little bit more defined than I'd like. And now, can you see how it's really starting to feel like water? It really, really is. These outside edges are still pretty, um, not very, I don't have a lot of color yet. So I'm gonna make sure that these are wet. It's been a little while since I've wet them down. So I'm gonna go around. And you can see how much I am dipping my paintbrush in my, my cup of water and how much I'm keeping that paintbrush wet. And that's gonna be really important. I'm going to take some of this turquoise color now and I'm gonna blot this through. And I'm gonna see what happens with those blotches. I'm probably gonna go in and spread them around a little sooner because I want, I want this to really spread through. And now that I'm, I've laid down my color, I'm gonna start building up color and that's referring to what I mentioned before. In watercolor, you can't really go lighter if you've already gone dark, but you can always go darker. So I'm gonna start building up my color and I'm gonna add more layers. For today's painting, I'm gonna keep my painting wet and you can also wait for your painting to dry where you can add more layers of color and that's gonna have a different effect than if I'm constantly keeping it wet. I'm gonna lift this up for a second because my water is starting to pool and make really interesting shapes. And so I'm gonna let it spread around and see how it's spreading even into that center part that's already starting to dry a little bit. I'm just gonna let it do what it wants to do. All right, we've got this ocean scene and I'm gonna add more color to it, but I'm gonna let it dry just a bit. If you feel like your watercolor is too wet, I can. it might be a little bit difficult to see in the camera, but right here I literally have a pool. It's like literally water, and it's just a little bit too much water. Um, I could get a blow dryer and blow dry it, or I could just dab it out, and you'll see that it also takes the color out with it, so you wanna be delicate, but I'm gonna just dab it out and then as it dries a little bit more, I'm gonna add some more color. We have these ocean animals and today's exercise is really about how to um, make this watercolor scene. But I'm going to start by giving a little bit more definition to these sea creatures. So I have these sea creatures and in order to give it just a little bit of definition, I have these colored pencils that I'm going to emphasize the pencil line that I already drew. Now these particular colored pencils are very compatible with watercolor. Um, you can use whatever kind of tool you want. I'm just gonna be using these colored pencils for now just to, um, just because it's what I have. I'm all about using what you have. I'm gonna give this eel a little bit of definition 
I'm going to go ahead and use blues and grays um, for my sea creatures underwater animals unless they have really really intense color are going to blend in with the colors of the ocean so I'm going to keep the colors that I'm using today very much in the blue and the gray category now I've got those little fish I'm going to be careful because my paper is wet so I'm having to reach over and give my little fish just a little bit of definition I'm keeping this very 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 simple um, I'm gonna use a little bit of this turquoise color and start filling it in and so when you mix these colors in you're gonna get a lot of that reflection of that ocean water so I'm just giving it a little bit of shading now because in the ocean the light is going to be coming from the sun I'm going to emphasize my shading and my shadows on the bottom of these animals and I'm not being too fussy I'm just giving a little bit of a hint just a very very little hint um, there are so many different ways that I could execute this and for today I'm actually going to get my paintbrush and I'm going to kind of re-wet this and it's going to pick up the watercolor and give it some some blending now depending on what you're using if it's a crayon or another kind of watercolor it might not do that as much but we're just going to fill that in for now all right i want to finish my water because that's really what we're here to practice today so i'm going to get my colors back over here and i'm going to start building up like we had talked about building up that color. So I'm going to start on my outside edges and I'm going to think about my outside edges possibly being a little bit more defined or my, my darker edge and it's going to set the value for the rest of it because now I have my, my darker colors and I'm going to take that color, blend it in and now see how I'm using my paintbrush to kind of, I'm going to start thinking about the way that the water is moving and I have these natural organic shapes that the water is made, but as I'm building it up, I'm gonna be thinking about maybe these like drifts of water that my paintbrush can now make through the lighter parts. So I'm gonna be moving my paintbrush from side to side and I'm holding it very, very lightly. And I'm letting the tip of the brush just show some of those currents that maybe you would see and it, because it's so wet it's it's hardly gonna um, it's gonna have a very subtle impact on the paper and that's that's what we want we want to just have a subtle impact and we're gonna build it up layer upon layer as we go I will finish this painting I would maybe spend a little bit more time on it but for today's purposes I really want you to play around with what water does on the paper as you're watercoloring and how to keep it really natural and organic like this. Before I finish though, I want to add a little bit more saturation underneath my ocean animals. This is gonna give you a little bit more of a sense of the depth of the water. And we don't want a hard shadow because they're swimming in water. It's not like they're walking on the sidewalk, but it will not only help to give a sense of depth in the water, but it will also help your eye as you're looking at your painting, see more of an anchoring from this activity. So I'm gonna finish this up. And you'll notice how when I lay a color down, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but when I lay a color down, it almost fades away. And that's because the paint underneath is still, still wet. So I'm gonna go over this very, very lightly, just building up color very, very, very lightly. Now, remember how we talked about how water has all kinds of color. As I'm building it up, don't forget to add other variations of blue and of green. As I was building it up just now, I was using just one color but now you see as I add in these other colors I'm gonna get more of the depth 
and more of the water and ocean like feel that I'm looking for. Before I finish, I'm just gonna add a little bit of green because I want to really have that iridescent or water-like feel. Maybe the tail needs to have a little bit more green in that shadow underneath. Now, just remember, as you're doing this, there's no such thing as a mistake. As you get a certain shape, or as you get a certain formation that the water gives you, go with it. See where it takes you. See what ideas it gives you about what water can do. Because we're making water with watercolor, it's going to give you ideas. The water is going to help you know where to go next. Now to finish this off, because my animals are just blending in a little bit more, I'm going to give these a little bit more definition. I'm going to give the underside of these guys just a little bit more help so that we can see them. And uh, because I really like happy creatures, I'm going to define those eyes a little bit more and those smiles. These little fish need cute little eyes as well. And just a little bit more definition of his body and his mouth, but not too much. I wanna keep it really, really loose. And I hope this has been helpful for you as you practice painting your watercolor.